Well, hi, everybody. I'm David Lusso. We're here. It's June 5th, 2021. I'm here for Coin Television, and we're here at the Texas Numismatic Association Convention. It's their annual coin show. It's the biggest one in Texas, and we're going to talk to all kinds of collectors and dealers to find out what's going on in numismatics. Well, here's registration for the Texas Numismatic Association. It's got a good turnout on here. Today is Saturday. You can see collectors are all about coming to this show. Every person registers so they get the information about them contacting them for future shows. Also, it's a safety precaution, so everybody that's at the show has been identified. Have you registered yet? You got, oh, you got your name tag on here. That's your password to get in and out. This is all free. This is a brochure for the club. That's a price guide. Okay. This is TNA Magazine. You're welcome to those. Who are you want and, to sign in? And you need to pay. Can I go get three dollars? That's important. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm a money bag. Oh, I'm a money bag. Oh, you all. Three or five? Three. 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 Well, it's quite a large bourse. There's more than 200 dealers here. They've come all from across the country because this is, one, it's the biggest coin show in Texas, and two, it's the largest coin show held since the pandemic of COVID. And I can tell you right now, there's dealers and collectors here from all over the United States and even some from around the world. Doug, we're here at the Texas Numismatic Association Convention. It's the end of the COVID virus. What was involved in putting this convention on? Well, I tell you what, over the last couple of months, based upon the changes of what cities and uh, the states are doing in regards to the regulations and how to keep people safe uh, at the end of the you know, the COVID and the pandemic situation, everything uh, created a, a lot of problems for us, but uh, nothing that we weren't able to uh, work through. And right now the show has been a, a tremendous success. The people are coming out in, uh, in, in droves yesterday. Uh, all I can say is that it was like a feeding frenzy for all the dealers here. Uh, the other thing that was uh, interesting to see that here at the TNA before was that we had so many uh, early bird dealers flying in across the country just eager to come in, uh, be together, uh, talk to one another, hug once, hug each other again. Uh, you know, the friendship, the camaraderie and everything, uh, it's just been really great. Uh, and uh, I expect today just to be even better than, than the last two days. Everybody has done extremely well business-wise. Uh, they have told me that they, they're making money hand over fist because people are eager to buy. The problem right now is, is that they're selling out so fast is that they're having a hard time replacing that inventory, uh, taking a lot of money home, but uh, <clears throat> without any inventory to sell wherever else we're going to go. So it's, it's been fun, it's been exciting, and uh, I'm hoping that we're going to get back to shows becoming, again, places where people want to go. So that's uh, that was the neat thing about it at this particular show today. So You also are in involved with the Anti-Counterfeiting Task Force. You gave a lecture here. What was that lecture like? So we gave a really great lecture yesterday morning in regards to the Anti-Counterfeiting Educational Foundation, which I'm the director of the Anti-Counterfeiting Task Force, uh, along with Greg Allen, one of our bo board members that uh, is on the ACF. And the purpose of that lecture was to give the dealers here uh, the opportunity to see what the different types of counterfeits that are coming in from China, the quality of the, the counterfeits, the technology that they're using to actually commit fraud to the, the general public. And it's such a significant issue right now that everybody needs to learn and understand 
that the counterfeits uh, have been flooding the U.S. market from China. And it's so important that the public understands that they need to make sure that they're going to the right people to do business with. Whether it's a PNG dealer, an A and A dealer, or if it's just a dealer within their own town that they can trust. Many of the Facebook pop-up ads that are selling coins for Eagles for $9.99 or Morgan Dollars for uh, $10 and everything, 99% of those are counterfeit. Uh, as director of the Anti-Counterfeiting Task Force, currently we're monitoring over 247 sites that are selling uh, counterfeit coins, whether it's e-commerce sites, whether it's websites, whether it's social platforms and everything. So the work that we are doing is to not only educate law enforcement who does not have the expertise to to investigate these cases. ACEF and ACTF has provided those tools for law enforcement and the general public to attack the issue of all these counterfeit coins being or flooding the, the U.S. marketplace. So we encourage everybody to, to look at the ACEF website, look at the resources that we have available. Uh, we're available 24 hours a day to assist law enforcement and the general public on this major problem that's uh, creating a lot of havoc within the, the, the numismatic community. So uh, we appreciate the cooperation of the dealers and everything in supporting ACEF. And to continue that, you know, we need, uh, we are a nonprofit. It's basically uh, we operate on, on donations, so we encourage everybody to help with that and, uh, because the work that we are doing is so important to attack and target these people that are defrauding the numismatic community and the general population. It's important the opportunity to buy coins, and there's all kinds of dealers where they advertise that they will buy coins from you. Well, hi, young lady. What's your name? Eleanor. And come to TNA. It's really fun. And what about coin collecting do you like? I really like coin collecting because there's so many varieties and, and, and so many types you can choose from. What are some of your favorite coins? I really, I really, I really like the starfish from the Bahamian starfish coins, and I and I really like it because because I've collected them when I was when I was a lot younger than I am now, and I really like collecting coins because of that. Now, who is this guy? This is my dad. All right, and he's the coin collector too. Yes, daddy. What's the best part of coin collecting? Well, I really like to get to meet new people and, and during the shows and the coin collecting is fun because there's, so, there's always a different a new coin that you can collect. And you have a business. What is the name of your business? Toady Coins. Some good displays of gold here at the TNA. Great place to buy your gold coins. Hey, there's some volunteers for the TNA. What do you guys do here at the show? We are co-chairs for the TNA Youth Auction. And what's involved with a youth auction? Well, the dealers give us donations, and what Dad does also with donations is he goes around and um, dealers give them coins, and we make paper money. And with the paper money, we put um, $20 in paper money together, and the kids actually get to bid on real coins. Paper money, foreign money, um, US money, Roman money, um, money from around the world. And they get to actually learn geography, um, well, <laughs> US history, foreign history, and they, they have fun. They bid, they outbid each other and have fun doing it and get to go home with money. 
and so they it's learn for their the feature. Actual, they learn an actual auction process. Yes, yes, wow. they do. And they, uh, they also we give them twenty five dollars a it's paper 20. money. Uh huh. And it's it's a good education for the kids. Yeah, so it's really good. Uh, it's a great way to learn um, sportsmanship as well. And how long have you been involved with the been DNA, doing it, Jimmy? Uh, I think more than ten years. Yes, He's been volunteering for over 10 years, but together we've been doing the auction itself for over five. What got you involved? Dad's been teaching me coins since I was little. Yes. <laughs> so, And he has my kids doing it as well, their pages. Yeah? Yes. And what's the best thing about coin collecting? Everything. <laughs> everything. You get to learn everything. Everything from around the world. So, yeah. Yes. It is. It, it's a... To me, it's a hobby, uh, and so when I got in it, I really got in it, and I collect also. But most important, uh, we get to uh, see the kids with a big smile yes. when they collect money, and they're like, "Oh my God, look at this!" And, and so they, uh, we're happy, they're happy, and we do this every year. We have two shows every year, and so. Yeah, we're just happy though. We're happy. We're happy that you're here too, though, with us. Because <laughs> I've seen you before. I know you. Yeah. So yeah, this is what's all about: keeping the kids, kids. happy and keeping them coming back. Yes, it's sir. kids. It brings us together as a family. Well, once again, all rocking the aisles at the Texas Numismatic Association. There's all kinds of people doing business here. It's really fun of stuff going on and lots of dealers. Scott, you're here at the Texas Numismatic Association convention. Why have you come to this convention? You know, Dave, thanks for asking. I said, this is my first time at the TNA show. Um, I fly in to help my father at the shows and I was asked if I would come help him at this show. And I'm really happy to be here. It's my first big show. Uh, and there's we've got 300 odd tables here. And I'm just really enjoying the experience of seeing all these dealers and all the different types of materials that are here. It's really, really cool. You know, there's great coins, of course, but then I, I see there's some gems and minerals and there's some jewelry and there's some you know, raw metals, and I'm, I'm really enjoying kind of getting that whole feel. And what has been like dealing with the public here at the show? What are they interested in? You know, the being that I've been at the smaller shows, coming to this show now, the, the appetite for coins is huge. Uh, we've been seeing all different types of retail clients coming to us, and we're selling things that we haven't sold commonly at some of the smaller shows that I've attended with my father. So we're seeing all different kinds of things being sold. Anything from your rig, your Morgans and the, the common things, but then we've sold some hobo nickels and some tokens and some commemoratives and things that are normally a little slower moving, but not at this show. It's been really good and it's been a lot of fun. And what do you do that you're not in the coin business? I professionally own a powder coating facility called Andrews Powder Coating in Los Angeles. And the coins has been a love of mine since I was a child. My father and I started when I was probably five. We started going to the local coin club and dealing, not dealing, but collecting. It was all collecting at that point, you know. And I had my Lincoln Sense book and, and I remembered those days. And so now that I've got the time and a little more resources, I'm becoming more involved with helping dad and I now I want to become a dealer not just as a help with dad but I I want to graduate and become my own dealer and so I'm going to slowly start working on that where I live in Southern California and I'll still come to Texas and help dad as long as he wants to keep dealing coins. And what's the best part about coin collecting? The history. No question. Uh, I have been graced with our bust half collection recently. Um, we're about 435 die marriages out of 450 and I am now very hot on the trail of those last 15 and I expect to keep doing that and I, completing a whole set of die marriages is pretty tough 
But what I like is the history, especially with bus tabs, you know, guys were cranking on levers and, and pushing these metals down into dies and, you know, and you start realizing how many different die marriages there are and why they happened and why dies broke. And you start getting this history when you find out that you might be looking at a coin that had George Washington's silver in it, his own collection of silver that was turned into coins, because that did happen. And that history that you get from holding a coin and looking at it and realizing where it came from is just, I've always loved American history, so to me it's, it's perfect. It's, it's a great marriage of having a way to make a little money and at the same time have some fun and get a little history lesson along the way. I've got something here to show you guys. This is a, uh, we'll call it a cameo because that's what it is. Cameos are interesting. What we wanted to show you is the really highly polished area around the outside where they polished the die. And then you'll also see the frosted area around the face and head of the uh, devices. And those were frosted by blasting them with a media, a very fine media to just create that frosting and to get that dual look of the polished and the frosted creating the cameo that we love. And then on the back side, you'll see a similar uh, look of the uh, frosting and the highly polished areas. These are beautiful, beautiful coins. This is a proof like 68 out of 70, and it's a very, very highly desired coin when you get them into this cameo uh, look. And we really like these cameos, and we think that they're great. What kind of value? Uh, this is a retail value, well, uh, slightly less than retail, but it's about $400 for a coin like this. Even though it's a fairly modern coin, it's a very, very high grade coin. And once you get your higher grade coins, they command more money than does your standard grade coin that might be a, let's say, a AU or something uh, up to below 60 in a grade. Uh, these are much higher value because of their uncirculated mint state condition. It's really wonderful to see so many people now. Now that the masks are off, people are smiling, people are talking. I've seen people here I haven't seen in almost two years. And it's all because they're free. They're free from having to worry about COVID. Tell me about the Texas Numismatic Association Coins for A's program. Uh, Students in the Texas, anywhere in the state of Texas, can send us their report card, usually by email, which is preferred, and we um, send them back, and as long as they have one A on their report card, any, from K through 12, we will send them collectible coins in the mail. And I mean, I mean we send Indian cents, we send buffalo nickels, V nickels, mercury dimes, silver certificates, we have a selection. I keep track of everything we send, Try not to duplicate, but if you've come about 40 times, you're going to be duplicates. So there's no way I can, you know, I mean, I run out of choices. But we try to send a variety of things, particularly from uh, the 1900s uh, up to current, if we can find, you know, we have that, but I don't have quite as much. Um, so, and we try to do state quarters, we've tried that, national park quarters, we do presidential dollars, we try to do everything. As long as a student is interested in a, like maybe they're doing Roosevelt dimes, okay? If they let us know what dimes they still need, we will try to help them finish or work on their collection. So we try to have as much of a relationship as we can with the students collecting goals. And we will even send albums if we need to, if they need that to help them with their collecting goals. All we have to do is know what, the, what they need, and we try very hard to meet them. I do have to say that we, you know, we only occasionally, the kids are wonderful, only occasionally do we get requests for silver dollars or something like that or gold. We can't send any of that, we'd run out of money. But we do very nice collectible coins. We try to make sure they have good dates so you know what, they're, what you have. And also we send a little Form, a little thing like this with questions. And those questions are not a test. 
They're just to help you when you look at the coin, you aren't saying, okay, here's 10 cents. You're having to look at what is the metal in this coin? When was it minted? Who is on the face? Who's on the reverse? So you learn about that particular year's coins. So that's what we, we're, that's our goal. That's our goal, to get the kids interested, to get them enthusiastic. I'm certainly enthusiastic about it. <laughs> so tell me again, this is available to any student in Texas. How do they get involved in the program? K through 12. Okay, here is on my flyer. But if you go to tna.org, there's a little, there's a, a button that pushes and puts you onto our email address and you email or you can actually mail if you don't want to email you can mail me a physical report card but a lot of kids like to email you know so that's perfectly fine email the report card or mail it to the to the address that's on that website but or you can it's uh, coins with the number four a's at gmail.com so can teachers also help to promote this program? I would love to have teachers um, help promote this program. We've actually gone to schools. I have a school in Willis that said the teacher collects it. You have to get permission as, as well know, but the teacher can say, if a teacher sends me a bundle of report cards, I will fill out all and send them back to the teacher and let the teacher distribute the report cards. So, I mean, we work in every way we can to try to get coins to the kids. Andrew, you're here at the TNA convention. Why do you come to this show? I like coming to the big shows like this because it lets me see a lot of really, really interesting and cool coins. And then the best way to learn a lot about them is to just look at lots and lots of coins. That's how, that's the best way to get better at grading them. That's the best way to figure out which coins you should buy, which coins you shouldn't buy. And you just get to meet a lot of cool people and you're set up as a dealer, what has the market been likely and what have people been wanting to see? The market's been really, really strong. So a lot of the really popular coins, the Carson City dollars, the, the big tight coins, those have all been super popular. Lots of people, now that shows are starting to pop up again all over the country, people are coming out and they're wanting good quality premium coins. And you're a young man in numismatics. How old are you and how long have you been involved as a coin collector? I'm 19. I've been collecting for about seven years. And what got you involved? Um, well, I first started uh, the state quarters, saw they were different and figured might as well try to put together a set of them. Um, and then I moved on to, to Wheat Sense, uh, so filled out an album of those. And then I just kind of got more in depth with everything and started going for older and rarer coins. And what are you doing with your life in terms of education and future vocation? I go to Queen's University studying business in uh, Ontario, Canada. All right. Well, best of luck. We always ask our dealer and collector friends, do you have a cool coin to show us? I do. I've got an 1841-0 Seated Liberty Dime, and it's from, it was recovered from the SS Central America shipwreck. So this coin sank down off the, court, uh, off the coast of the Carolinas and was in 2,200 meters of water. But So usually silver shipwreck coins are quite corroded because of the salt water. But this one was kind of unique because it was very well preserved because these coins were in a safe under deck. So they didn't have nearly as much salt water flowing over them. So with a little bit of conservation, you can get them into a problem-free graded holder. Um, so that's the case with this coin. This happens to be the finest known coin for the date that was recovered from the shipwreck. And why were there so many dimes recovered? The dimes were kind of special because they were used to pay the, the sailors that were on board the ship. So a lot of the ship's cargo was uh, mostly gold, so either assay bars or $20 gold pieces. Um, and that was just using, that was just transporting wealth. But the dimes, they were just, they were, they were paid for the sailors and unfortunately a lot of the sailors died when that ship sank. And what kind of value on this one? Uh, this coin's worth about $1,000. We are up here. We will we will be picking a gold coin and as we read the information about the gold coin, we will spin the barrel another time so that there's a fresh cover. Alright, I'll just pick one of the uh, tickets. These are one dollar for the next well, two pesos.
This is for a 1987 W Constitution or uh, Constitution gold coin. This will be our first commemorative gold coin to be raffled off. And shall we pick a ticket? Well, let's pick a ticket. Let's pick a ticket. Okay, we're going to pull the ticket out, close it up again, and the winner is... Princeton? Prin Would you like to say Prin Princer, maybe? Princer, maybe? That might be uh, it. 281 area code on the phone number, which I think is Houston. Yeah. So we'll uh, hold that up for everybody to see. And that is, somebody's going to be really happy right now. All right. Okay. Thanks, sir. And there's the coin. You got it. Should we go for number Let's two? Spin it again. All right. This is for a 2005 $5 Gold Eagle PCGS MS69. This is going to be great. Okay. And here is our coin. And. The winner is David Porter, I'm going to guess. Porter. Looks like David Porter is going to be our winner. I won it. This is. I'm not sure that that's David Porter. Apparently, Dave Porter is in the house. All right. Seven area code on the Number phone, two. which is Fort Worth. Should we go for number three? Yep. Sure. All right. And the third, 1892 Restrike Austria four foreign or ten francs. .09322 AGW. Here is the coin. And uh, a young lady is going to be very happy right now. This looks like Beyonce Sanchez. I'm yes. going to go. I'm going to say Beyonce Sanchez from Far, Texas. 512. Uh, we don't even say their number. There's no reason. Good. But hey, we've got a winner. In Far, yeah. Congratulations. From the Far. Bianca or, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're having fun with this. Okay. You want to draw one, young lady? Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on. You've got, what, four tickets in here? One. One? Okay. One ticket. Grab one. Don't look. You can't look. Eleanor, don't look. Okay. What'd you get there? Okay, that looks like Elizondo. Elizondo. Elizondo it is. So Elizondo is the winner we of have, this coin. We have some information on Elizondo back in the office area. Perfect. And we'll be contacting him. Beautiful. Okay. Our next coin, these are some uh, Mexican Dos pesos. Mexican dos pesos. That was 1919. 1919? The other two are 1945. Okay. And, 19. and our next winner is Jeannie Walton. I'm going to, or Watson, I'm sorry. Jeannie Watson is the winner of the dos pesos. Second one, also 1945. Mexican, dos pesos, dos right? Pesos, yeah. And where do the dos pesos come from? Mexico. Oh yes, of course, Mexico. <laughs> of course it's Mexico. Hey, okay, here we go. Number six. Number six, coming up. Can't look. That would be a conflict. 
Okay, there we go. I'm gonna say this is Stacy. You wanna say Davis? Davis I'm thinking. Stacy Davis. Uh, A three six one area code. One area code. Right. The winner of the second dos pesos. Okay, this is the very last one. So you guys, I want somebody to win who's standing here. I mean, come on. Okay. Don't look. <laughs> Dig deep. Are we ready? Should we shuffle it again? Yeah, yeah. let's do it again. Yeah. Started to come out. Okay. One at the bottom there. there you go. We got to put it back in. Yeah. Let's put it back in. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Technical error due to exuberance by the puller. Okay. Uh oh, this is someone who's got a sticker on it. Mr. Jerome Osditch. Osditch, Jerry we're going to call it. Jerry Osditch from Fort Worth, so a local winner in 817. Wins at Dos Pesos. Both Heritage Auctions and the Texas Numismatic Association. We've had a I got a hot load in the damn truck. Show and convention this year. And we look forward to seeing you again next year. Thank you so much. And goodbye from the TNA. <coughs> Right, well, this is David Lasso. We're just closing the Texas Numismatic Association. I'm with Coin Television, and I'm proud to be part of a, a life member of the TNA, and it's a great organization, and these, the, uh, some of the team that makes it work. And we'll see you all at the, our next convention. Thank you. Hey. Bye.